Welcome to the Advanced Computer Architecture course. I am Deepika Dev and in this video I will explain how memory models are implemented in GEM5. I will also provide some insights on how to solve the second assignment on GEM5. As a quick recap of the previous video on GEM5, the figure shows how a CPU and memory interacts in GEM5. In GEM5, the CPU memory interaction works in a master-slave fashion where the CPU is the master and it requests for something from the memory. The memory executes the request and replies back to the CPU. This is done using the send timing and receive timing signals. These signals are implemented in GEM5 as packets. In this video, we will deal with the memory models only. GEM5 builds different memory components such as caches, DRAM, interconnects, etc. There are two main memory models available in GEM5, classic memory and Ruby memory. Throughout our assignment, we will use Ruby memory. The classic memory model provides a fast, flexible and easy configurable memory system. It uses a bus or crossbars to connect the caches and memories in the system. For multi-core processors implemented in classic memory system, Moisey Snowpip coherence protocol is implemented. This memory model is faster than the Ruby memory model, but it is suitable only for a small number of multi-core processor, generally less than 8 cores in a system. On the other hand, Ruby memory model provides an accurate and detailed simulation of various memory systems. It also has both Snoopy and directive based coherence protocols that is MSI, Messi, Moisey and so on. The cache controllers in Ruby model are implemented using a domain specific language known as SLICC and the caches and memories are connected together using a special buffer known as message buffers. Ruby is suitable for a larger multi-core system unlike classic memory. Hence we will use Ruby memory model in our GEM5 course. The figure shows an overview of the Ruby memory model. Here the processors are connected with L1 cache controllers with message buffers. Similarly, the L1 cache controllers are connected with the interconnection backbone using message buffers. The memory components communicates with each other by gener generating packets such as request and reply. For example, the processor generates a request to the L1 cache. From the L1 cache, if it is a hit, it replies back to the core. In the previous video, I have already shown how to configure a unicore processor with different L1 cache and L2 cache configurations. The second assignment on GEM5 will contain such modifications which you can either enter through the command line or options.py file. So these are the related files for assignment 2. You can find this options.py in this directory. The simulation script can be found in this directory. You may also require these three files which can be found in source mem ruby structures directory. This actually implements the caches in ruby module. These three files in association with options.py file are of prime importance in solving assignment 2. So by this we have come to the end of today's video. For any further queries you can write us in the discussion forum of our course web page. Thank you.